what you would do is kind of take a period of time and say, five years might not be a bad thing is over the course of five years, how long do we keep our average customer? And so, so, so you'll go in and say, Hey, we added them all up, all of our customers up with in that five year period, we had 10,000 customers. And on average, we kept those customers 24 months. Some of them we kept 18 months, some of them we kept three years, but in, on average, we kept them eight, 24 months. So then you say, okay, cool. hundred dollars a month, 24 months means my customer lifetime value is $2,400. The real question then becomes, all right, if you know that when you get a customer in and you're going to make theoretically $2,400 for them on average, how much money will you spend in order to get that customer? So that's when you start getting into something called allowable cost per sale. The allowable cost per sale is roughly 10% of your customer lifetime value. Now, I'm saying roughly, and this is a basic way of doing things, I'm given the sort of fundamentals of this because there are a lot of people, I, I wrote a book on social media with a professor at a Emory University here in Atlanta, and I described this model that we're, you and I are talking about, Liam, and she said, do me a favor, that's a very very fundamental model, and I, you know, I teach this, I'm a PhD, it's much more complex than that, but the bottom line is, let's keep focusing on this sort of platform and then you can get more and more sophisticated as you move on but the key idea is that customer lifetime value we talked about in phase one phase two is allowable cost per sale how much will i spend in order to acquire a new customer a starting point for that is 10 percent. so think about this from a chief financial officer's point of view they go in and they say hey you go to the chief financial officer and you say hey guess what if you give me $240, I can make $2,400 for you. That's a one to 10 return on investment. Any CFO on the planet would say, yeah, I'll give you 240 bucks. If you can generate $2,400 based on that, here's, here's a pile of money, you know, because we can do it. Now that makes it sound very simple. It's actually more, it's harder to do than you think. Here's why, and now we're ready to move on to phase three, which is this, you have to figure out how many people are gonna to go to your website for that $240 before you convert a customer in order to make the $2,400? So in other words, we've said our customer lifetime value is 2,400. We said we'll spend 10% of that to get customers. So that gives us $240. Now let's say we're the lawn care company and we're saying, well, let's run Facebook ads in order to drive people to our website and get them to buy our lawn care service. So you run $240 worth of Facebook ads. Let's pretend for a second that it costs a dollar per click when you run a Facebook ad. So I'm gonna put you on the spot here, Liam. I'm about to ask you math. If I, if I have 240 bucks and I say it's a dollar a click on my Facebook ad campaign, how many, how many people am I gonna to drive to my website? Yeah, well, let, let's hope it's uh, it's two hundred and forty. <laughs> you got it, excellent. And I hate I hate putting you on the spot there. If it was me, Liam, I would have like flamed out and said, "Oh my God, I don't know. Let me get a calculator." But you're 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 as smart as I thought you were. So the bottom line is now we have two hundred and forty people on the website, right? Well, that's only half the battle because we've got to get at least one of those people to convert in order for that money to make sense. In